Welcome back to PHP for beginner series. In this tutorial, I will discuss arrays. I hope uh, you had a chance to listen to my earlier four tutorials which discuss installing EasyPHP and uh, topics on variables, data types and assignment, if and switch statement and the for while and the do while loops. The objective of this lesson is to learn about 1D and 2D arrays. In 1D I will discuss both numeric meaning with a numeric index or associative. So what's an array? An array is a collection of variables of the same type. Arrays can have one or more dimensions. Arrays are convenient for holding related variables. For example, daily closing stock prices. An array is a group of variables of the same data type and referenced to by a common name. So why do you need an array? For example, if you want to store stock prices for 30 days, you will have to declare 30 variables. To handle such situations, you need arrays. You can store all the 30 values or more in one array, in one variable. Arrays also allow you to organize data in such a way that it can be handled easily and easily manipulated. For example, if closing stock prices for March 2010 are stored in an array, it is easy to compute the average stock price for that month in about less than five lines of code. Also, data stored in an array can be easily sorted or searched. Let's start with creating a, a one-dimensional array. In PHP, there are three kinds of arrays. You have numeric array, meaning an array with a numeric index. That's what I will start with first because this is very similar to the arrays in other programming languages. PHP also supports associative arrays. Here an array where each ID key is associated with a value. You can also have multi-dimensional arrays, an array containing one or more arrays. That's how they are interpreted in PHP. Here we are creating a numeric array or again remember the numeric refers to the index value not the content of the array. A numeric array and initializing it with 10 elements. So the array contains Saab, Volvo, etc. the 10 elements. Each item in an array is called an element and each element is accessed by its numeric index if you didn't say anything else about it. As shown in the illustration numbering begins with 0 by default. The ninth element for example would therefore be accessed by an index of 8. In this example we are creating an array of four elements and then assigning a value to each element. In real world situation you will probably read the stock prices from a database or a file. In this example I am providing the index values 0 to the first, 1 to the second, 2 to the third, 3 to the next one and so forth. Of course even if I did not those are the default indexes the array would have. Then if I want to access array elements I can say stock prices and in square brackets 0 that would return the first element 23.5 with an index of 2 would return the third element the value of which is 21.3. If you try to access an array which is out of bound you will get an error. So in this case I'm trying to access an array with an index of 4. The valid indexes for that array are 0 through 3. Let me introduce you to a function called rand which will generate random numbers. In this case, if you call the function with two arguments, 20 comma 30, it will generate a random numbers between 20 and 29, but not 30. Every time you call that function, you will get a different random number. If you run the same two lines of code on your computer, most likely the output would be different. It is not going to be 26 and 21, but it will be two 
numbers between 20 and 29 some two random numbers between 20 and 29 so that's what the random what that's what the rand function does okay so now let's use that rand function I set up a for loop which starts at 0 and stops at 29 less than 30 meaning the last value of that variable I would be 29 and as I go through the loop I'm going to fill in the numbers the stock prices with a random number between 20 and 30 so when that loop ends the stock prices array will contain numbers between 20 and 29 then I want to process these numbers so I set up the same or a similar for loop but here I'm going to print the values of the stock prices in this case the values that are stored in that array so the first value was 24 the second was 22 etc and remember here I am printing I plus 1 because I starts at 0 but I like to think that the, the first value in that array has an index of 1 that's the first element so I plus 1 would of course go from 1 to 30 as I goes from 0 to 29 here is the associative array um, and these are really very interesting uh, this type of array is not present in other programming languages like Java or C sharp you cannot directly create an array like that even though there may be other data structures which might allow you to create uh, an, an a structure like this so here I am creating an array called ages and my index values are not numeric my index values are names so what I want to say is Peter's age is 32 Jim's age is 30 and Ken's age is 34 and so in this case the index basically is the name so this is called an associative array now if I want to print Peter's age then I say ages which is the name of that variable the array variable and the index value that I specified Peter so in this case the result would be Peter is 32 years old 32 is the value that we provided while we created the array you can also create a two-dimensional array why do you need a two-dimensional array here I have five tests and I want to score I want to store the test scores for these five tests for four students so this is this one has two dimensions one dimension is the students the other dimension is the test in this case five tests and four students so this looks a little busy but this is how you go about creating a two-dimensional array think about a two-dimensional array as an array of an array but now let's look at how you can actually use that array if you want to ask the question what is Linda score on test number four so you would say scores which is the name of that array the first index is Linda the second index is test 4 simple right the result in this case would be 86 which is this value Linda got 86 in test number 4 okay so we just had a quick introduction to arrays the next topic that is coming up is the most used built-in functions in PHP please visit my site it has tutorials on many different topics uh, such as Java, C Sharp, Visual Basic, PHP of course and also one coming up on XML. Thank you for listening.